Hey everyone, welcome to Adventure World in Godot. So, <clears throat> last time we worked on getting the pick and being able to break through walls, and so it's been a little while and I forgot what was next, so I checked back to our uh, initial plan, and so we were at, we've got the the merchant, we've got the coin up here that we can buy the torch from, we've got the dark cave, we've got the pick, but here's where we, were, we where we stopped was we need the diggable area which we've got, but we need the jetpack and then the jetpack will get the key and then we'll have the boss. So uh, I was looking at the jetpack next and I was making a room for it and I was like you know what it'd be pretty boring to just break through a wall which we've already done and then uh, grab a jetpack and go on. So I thought maybe we should have a little mini boss here. So what I've done is I've I've cut this out off camera. I cut off cut out this area. I had to adjust my um, darkness area. So the cave darkness. I've readjusted these to be out here a little bit so they encapsulate this thing. So if you're doing this yourself, you'll have to you'll want to do that. Um, and I you know I adjusted these foreground and background tiles. I had to add some more background uh, dirt and in the foreground I built all this and so what we're gonna do is I've already moved my player up here and what I want to do is I'm gonna we're gonna add an enemy we're gonna add an enemy down here and what I was thinking is uh, where's my enemies Maybe we can use this bat. I was going to use it as kind of a decorative thing, but I thought maybe this would make a really good uh, mini boss. So what I was thinking is he'll start off on the ceiling somewhere here, hanging like this, and then he'll fly down, fly over, and then fly back up. So if he hits you anywhere during that time, uh, you'll take damage. But this will give the player the opportunity that while he's flying this way, that you'll be able to jump on top of him. All right. So we don't want just the image there. We need to make a game object for that. And I've got, um, so we'll need a new scene. And it will be of type kinematic body 2D. And I've already got, let's go ahead and make a, well, let's rename it. So looking at my actors, I've got I've been prefixing them with enemy, so let's do that same thing. Let's call it enemy bat boss. All right, <clears throat> and then we'll create a script, and we'll leave that alone. This path though could be uh, actors. Good. And. If I look at one of my other ones, I'm inheriting, I'm an extending from this actor script. Uh, I looked at it and I don't think we're going to use much from it, but we'll go ahead and do it just to be consistent. And it wants to save the scene, so I'm going to also save that in here in the actors. And so there's my bat boss. Alright, so let's clear this out. <clears throat> and if we look at the fish, uh, probably need this one so that we can hurt the player and we will need the actor behavior but the we'll be changing it quite a bit so we'll grab those and we'll go to where's our boss there we go <clears throat> so now this it won't hurt the player yet because we need a damage area 2d so let's go ahead and add those um, so let's jump out of the script view into the 2D view. We're also going to need a, a sprite. And I'm going to need an animated sprite because I'm going to add some animations. I'm going to need um, a collision shape 2D for my static body or kinematic body. And this is just going to be a rectangle and let's get some sprite sprite in here for a default one I apologize if I'm going too fast I'm trying not to make this too boring since we've already done uh, 
a lot of stuff like this already. So really I've got two flying animations. and a dead animation which just has a little crossed out eyes and a hanging animation so it's, oh, I'm looking at the animator what I really want is frames, sprite frames here we go so default let's call this one hang and we'll pull that one in create a new one this would be fly. We'll pull this one in and this one in. Those do not look like the same size to me. Let's uh, see what that looks like. I think I can select it here. And let's do playing. Oh, it does look good. Alright. Um, so. Let's go back into our sprite frames. We've got one more. We've got dead. Not sure if we'll use. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. I don't know if we'll use it or not, but it'll be set up. There we go. Okay, so we've got our animations. Let's go click back here. We do need to set up our collision shape. So we'll make that a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. And if we go into this one, the flying one, we may want to widen this a little bit. If we're going to use the same collision shape for both. Let's go to about there. And then if I go back to the hanging one, that doesn't look too horrible. And so this will be the collision shape that will affect damaging the player, so we wouldn't want it to be too out of bounds of the image. All right, so we've got our our sprite, we've got our collision shape, and we've got our bat boss. So, the new thing that I want to oh, we can go ahead and drag that in. So we should be able to go up here, actors, bat boss, drag him in. Now I noticed one thing already, he's really small. So let's make him bigger, and he is in here in my enemies, which is fantastic. Um, I can scale them here or I can scale them here. Uh, let's go ahead and scale it here. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go to transform scale. This is on the sprite. And I'm going to scale this up by uh, two. Let's go back and see if that looks too big here. I think that's probably about right. Yeah, that looks good. Still need the player to be able to jump over him. Not too difficult. Or not be not too difficult to jump over, but also... Uh, there we go. Let's try the other animation real quick. Just... Yeah. I'll scooch this down just a touch. Remember to grab those inside handles and not the outside ones. And so let's go back to hang, save, flip back over here, we'll position it about there. All right, <clears throat> so the big difference here, um, oh, I do need to attach the um, collision shape. So this is just a collision shape. We could rename it to the damage collision shape. I believe that's what uh, damage area. Well, here's what we'll do. We just won't worry about the name there. We'll rename this just collision shape. And what we'll do is um, oh, I see. Yeah, this is not how we were doing it. So let's go look at uh, one of our other ones real quick at our fish. So on the fish we've got the collision shape and then we've got a slightly larger, we've got a, a, an area 2D 
with a collision shape that's slightly larger for damaging the player. That way the fish can bump into objects without going through them um, and we can still damage the, damage the player. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. That way we're going to be doing our, our bat on a path, so he really shouldn't go off from the path and hit something he shouldn't, but just for, for um, consistency I think that'd be fine. So let's go ahead and, and change this down a little bit um, to match a little bit tighter. And then we'll create another one. And this was an air, uh, area 2D. And then on that, we had another collision shape. That's a collision polygon, here's a collision shape. And on that, we had another rectangle. And that rectangle was the one that was a little bit bigger for damaging the player. All right, and we did call this one damage area 2D. Whoop, small d. Okay, <clears throat> so now if I go to here and I go to node and I do body entered and I connect that up to my script up here, it tied it right into that method that I already had. <clears throat> copied over. Probably if I was to do it over again I would probably do that first and then just copy the text over but seems to have handled it pretty well so let's go with it. Alright so let's test it out right here uh, before we go too far to make sure everything's working as we want. We're gonna put it down here approximately where the player is gonna be and we will test the player being able to jump over it. Uh, yeah so we already have a problem Good thing we're finding it early. And what the, this is, is this is some of the uh, fish stuff that we had in there. Um, this is for making the movement and stuff change. Uh, I don't think it hurt anything because we're not going to be moving it off the bat. But uh, we'll just leave it in there. It's not going to hurt anything. So I can run in here. Uh, it did hurt somebody. <laughs> All right. Well, my player player is taking damage, and uh, <laughs> passes out just as we would hope. So this is working great. <clears throat> now we just have to deal with the movement. We're also going to have uh, multiple hit points on the bat. So we're going to have. Uh, I'm shooting for probably three. And I don't think my generic actor has, oh, it does have health. So we've got two health right now. So what we can do is override this value for the bat. So what I can do is up here at the top, I can say health equals three. And we'll try that. Also, let's see. There's the amount it gets hurt. Okay. Let's try this. So we've got a little bit more health on this guy. And <clears throat> what we want to do is make him move down, over, and back up. So I could do this a few ways. Uh, I could start it off here, and I could just programmatically say, there's a point here, there's a point here, and there's a point here. Uh, so we could use... Um, let's see, we could use, uh, air, uh, where's my button for new nodes, here we go, we could use, uh, position 2Ds, don't see them here, so we could use these, and what I could do is I could create, uh, four of them, and they would be my setup of places to go. And I could say go towards it, and when I get there close to it, then move to the next one. That's not a bad idea. Uh, but Godot has another thing, another node type, that I think will work for what we want to do. So let's add it here. I think I can add it as. Not sure if I add it as a child, it may move with it. And we 
don't want that. So we want a path 2D. And if I hit the F key, it'll jump to it. So it's way over here at 0, 0. And it's probably actually OK, because what we're going to do is we're going to select that path. And then up here in the uh, toolbar, you'll notice there's modification buttons. And what we can do is set it to this green one will add points. So we could add a point there, we could add a point here, get a point over here, and finally one up there. And it's hard to see because we've got this um, thing over it and I just accidentally added one I don't want. So I can hit the X one and delete that one. <clears throat> but in here there's this, um, oh there we go. So these are my points. Alright, whoops, I'm still on the delete, didn't want to do that. So I can do is not that. There's a way that didn't do it either. Well, what I get, oops, that's for making a curve. Sorry, I'm manipulating here. This will work. So there's also a follow node, which you probably saw here, path follow. And then what I can do is make the bat be a child of the path follow. And I may need to go do some research, but before we get too much further. But let's Google it real quick just to see if we find something simple. I have used these before, but it's been quite a while. So we'll just check it out. There we go. Um. Yeah, so we've got an offset, and I think if I remember right, we just adjust the offset. So let's try that real quick and see if that does what I think it will do. And then if that doesn't work, I'll go off and research and we'll come back. So the problem here is we're working with velocity instead of um, position. So it might actually work better to just do the points. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this. So what I can do is um, go, let's just see if we can get this value. Actually, that's what we'll do. We'll get the value and print it as it moves along. So we're going to say uh, parent, get parent. This will get the, excuse me, the path follow. We'll say offset equals oh let's just do plus equals uh, one let's see what happens when we do this oh uh, we also need to set vel dot x equals zero vel dot y equals zero and we'll delete this Stop, restart. Uh, member health already exists. Ah. Uh, 
So override. Oh, I know how to do it. My bad. Yeah, in uh, other languages, you can override by um, defining the variable here. In Godot, you can't do that. What I need to do is do a function on ready. There's the ready function like that. And then do uh, health equals three. So this is the uh, constructor. So this will run the first time once and only once when the uh, object is created. All right, so let's see what's going on. All right, so there goes my bat. Look at that. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if this is going to work as much as, I, as well as I wanted it to because what's happening is uh, he's rotating as well with the path. So the neat thing is it did work. Um, and it also respects, and there it jumped, <clears throat> because my uh, <clears throat> loop isn't closed. The way I could fix that is instead of um, going here and then stopping, is I could actually come back down, go over, and then back up, and then close the loop. And that will cause the, the bat to fly down and back. Um, We could fix this by doing a ah, rotate off. That might actually be what I needed right there. So let's try that and also let's adjust this um, path to allow him to fly back down, back over, back up, and then close the loop. So you notice how it changed the color, and this guy's oops, didn't want that. All right, so back on my path. Let's delete that one. So if we look at this, there, that should be good enough. All right, so moving those closer together, because what's going to happen is he's going to He's going to look like he's jumping. And these don't need to be as close because you player probably won't notice him flying back. So let's give this a shot. So he's going to fly down. He's going to come over. Yeah, perfect. He didn't rotate. is going over <clears throat> a little bit too far and the reason I believe oh, is uh, it's probably attached to his top right corner and so he's over you know like half of the image more than what I kind of expected and there he's going back so it's kind of perfect two things I want to pause at the top and I also want to just you know the the path so he's not flying so far over and he's kind of flying a little bit early here uh, and he also needs to move faster. So let's take a look at those three things. So to make him move faster, I can just adjust this number. Uh, and we could even do that when a variable appears. So we could say var move speed equals three. And just put that number here. And then um, what was the other thing? We want him to pause and, oh, adjust the path. So if we go back here, ah, that's why. So when I moved him, he's moving in relative position to where he started. So if he starts right there, should be good. All right, and then pausing is a little bit of a different story. Uh, that I could do in a few ways. So, the easiest way I can think of is to have an area here, and if he enters the area, um, then he stops for a certain period of time. I'm not sure if we can check if he hits a path, like a node on the path, that we stop.
So I'm looking for So this is all offset, so this one would be the unit offset, so you could tell a number between 0 and 1 and how far you are through the whole path. Uh, this is the rotate that we turned off. This is the distance we've moved. This is whether you want to loop or not. Um, not sure if we could jump from one path to another that might be another option so then we could have oh I know exactly what we can do alright this is, this is kinda neat so <clears throat> let's undo those extra points we added move this back off click on my paths and I'm gonna delete this one, this one, this one, this one, and if you can guess what I was thinking about, you get extra points. Um, but my plan is, let's start him here, right? So this is at the beginning of the path. Then he's going to fly through the path, and when he gets here, we're gonna turn off loop alright so he should stop when he hits here then what I'll do is I'll reverse after a period of time we'll start a timer then we'll reverse the the movement so instead of adding to the um, offset we're gonna subtract from the offset and when he gets back here we'll um, do the same thing so I do need a timer here so let's add a timer And we will call this hang timer. So this will be the amount of time he hangs. Let's hang for like 1.5 seconds and uh, one shot auto start. <clears throat> uh, and we need an event when that happens, timeout, and we'll connect it. Alright, so here's the timer and um, ah yes, so how do we know when we hit the end of the uh, the curve or the path? Well we can use this unit offset and if our unit offset is 1 then we know we're at the end of it. So let's grab that, go here, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, oh and we need to know which direction we're moving so we're going to also have another variable called um, path direction dir equals uh, path dir forward true that way I can use a boolean I could use a, an integer and just say like 1 is forward and 2 is backwards but that's a little bit more confusing this way I'm saying you know I know if this is true that I'm going forward and if it's false then I'm going backwards so here I can say if path dir forward equals true then what I want to do is move forward and then if if um, parent dot and then we'll grab this the unit offset is equal to 1.0 uh, the point O is not super important there. Um, then what we'll do is we'll stop. And so we also need a stop or a hang. Is hanging equals true. So we're going to hang it at the beginning and then, um, then move forward. So if, right, and then is hanging equals true. We're also going to start our timer. So we're going to say dollar sign hang timer dot start. Alright. And that 
should be it. We're also going to have an else. Uh, no, don't need that. Right, so then else, and this is the else for this thing instead of this one. So else, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to change this to minus equals the move speed, and I'm going to change this to zero. All right, and the only other change I need to make is is hanging equals false, and that should start me moving again. Um, I think I can move these up here into my ready just to make sure he doesn't move by default and that should clean this up a little bit let's see what happens oh there he goes he's moving a little faster he's going back up there he's hanging should be 1.5 seconds that's a lot longer than 1.5 seconds <laughs> alright so um, What can we do? Oh, yeah, so here we're not, we, what we need to do is say if is hanging um, equals false, then we do this stuff. So only move if we're not hanging, right? Uh, I don't think that'll fix whatever we just saw. So, let's, we'll try it and see. Um, so we shouldn't, okay. There he goes. I should temporarily give myself a little block I can jump up on so I can see without having to bounce. Yeah, so I don't know if it's if this is firing or not, so let's go ahead and add a uh, log, a print, um, hang done, so we know the hanging is done. Let's also add that block that I was talking about because that's kind of annoying. Uh, so I need to go to the foreground tile map, just add a block and we'll add it right there play. There he goes. Now we're going to look down here and we should see another hang done. We're not. I think what it is is we're using timer start. You may need to do like timer restart. look at that real quick so timer and see why it might not be restarting uh, We don't want interesting. Yeah, we don't want the um, to use the repeat, which is the not one shot because that would um, that would cause it to keep firing whether we stopped it or not so I'm not sure why it's not refiring oh I have an idea 
we are, I assumed that this works the way I expect it to. Let's go ahead and print this and see where it's at. So as we're moving, let's do a print this, and we're going to get a flood of numbers, but that's okay. So, okay. So we actually went past one. That's interesting. So all I need to do is change this to greater than equal to, not question mark, greater than equal to, or less than equal. If I can type, <laughs> there we go. Let's try that now. And so we've got zero. It's moving over. Flying up. He's on the roof. And our number should have restarted. And it did not. Another thing I'm noticing is we're not stopping. So see here, I know that number is over one. So we've moved the unit offset is over one but uh, we've not set is hanging to true because this stuff is still executing inside here and this so that's very interesting so what I really want to do is stop this and I can tell that because this number is still incrementing up even though it is. Oh, 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 oh. I think I know what it is. So, you notice here, I'm getting a spam of numbers. They're all the same, and then it increments by a chunk, and then it stays um, stays again. So my problem is, uh, check this out. I'm not flipping my path forward. I'm conditioning on it. So what's happening is it's coming in here, it's uh, using this till it gets to the end. Once it gets to the end, it's kicking off the timer, and this number is printing, and that's why it's printing the same number over and over and over and over. And then this same code is happening again because path forward is still true, and that's what's going on. So all I need to do, why well, I feel silly, is if the offset breaches there, then we say path forward false. And the same thing here equals true to go back the other way. Let's try that. So there he goes down. <clears throat> My number is incre incrementing. And I just hit the one. It stopped. He paused for a second and he turned around and he's going back. <clears throat> Let's see if he does the same thing properly on the other side. And he does. Perfect. So one more thing that I see is when he's flying, he's not animating his um, flapping his wings. That actually should be pretty easy to do because we know when he's moving and that's when he's not hanging. So all I should have to do is I no longer need this. So what I'm going to do is say if, uh, oh, actually I'm already doing if hanging faults. So all I need to do is right here is say, animated sprite dot play and it was fly I believe we'll find out otherwise and then I'm gonna do an else so I need to make sure I'm at the right it needs to be right on the that right that same line there else I'm gonna do animated sprite dot play hang alright and let's watch this So he's animating his little flight. He's going back up. He goes back into his hang animation, and then he flies down. Wow, this is working a lot better than I thought. We are. <laughs> I shouldn't shouldn't act so surprised, but uh, it went a lot smooth more smoothly than I anticipated. Let's put it that way. So that didn't work out so hot, um, but I do take damage. 
So let's look at what goes into our player jumping on top of stuff. So I remember we got it working for, let's clean this up just a touch while we're in here. I remember we got the jumping working for another actor. So let's look at, what was it, the snail I believe? So let's look at the snail. And so the snail has very little, actually I moved the collision shape, see the damage collision area? is this one right here and the collision shape actually pokes over the top a little bit all right I bet that's what our problem is or why the bats not working but let's go ahead and look real quick these rays are for its uh, movement and there's the damage and it doesn't do anything else so yeah I'm gonna put my money that that's what we messed up. Don't want to save any changes there because I don't know what I did. So all I've got to do here is on this damage collision shape area, collision shape, move that down. And I don't want to move it there. So what I can do is actually shift it down a little bit like that. And we'll move, bring it back up a little bit. Let's try that. <clears throat> and see if I can now jump on top of them. <clears throat> As he passes by, well, <clears throat> well, I landed on him. Uh, I may not be damaging him, and so we need to look at that. <clears throat> but I certainly can land on him without hurting myself, which is good. So I believe that's going to be over in our player script. So let's look here. So here's the feet race. Check dump jump attack. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So um, for each ray in the feet, so those are from what I remember back when we did this, we've got these three rays right here that shoot down a little bit out of his feet. So if any of those are colliding. Uh, then we do jump attack and we do player jump okay so that forces you to re-jump again and then target ray collider and then if it has the method hurt then we call it all right, so we know that all uh, actors have hurt, so that should work by default. And the only reason I think this is not working is because of um, our collision masks or collision layers. So if we look at our bat and we look at the damage collision area and we go to the inspector and we look at the collision we're on layer one, mask one. So that's his uh, dark block is checked right there. All right. I'm guessing we need to be over here on enemy and not on this one. And to verify that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to the snail, which we got working. There we go. And let's look at its collision. Ah, so here's two things. One, I messed up. So it still has the this first one selected and the reason for that is okay okay so we need to, okay so two things I need to be able to hit the snail collision and not the collision area so I need to make sure I'm editing the right collision mask and secondly I want to be able to hit the walls um, and because otherwise I'll just my bat will move right through the walls and I'm actually if you if you noticed I was kind of sloppy with these lines here. They don't. It would be difficult to make them stop precisely on the on the the ceiling. So what's happening is is the point is pushing them into the ceiling, and then the physics is taking over and and keeping them from going through the ceiling. So let's go ahead and check that. So what did I do here? So in my bat, um, I edited these, which I sh guess what I was not supposed to do. All right, and but I was supposed to edit this one. 
So on my physics body, I also want to be on the layer enemy. So let's give that a try. And he's coming down. I'm going to get him. And there we go. Whoa. Okay. So that was interesting. Um, definitely worked, but then my character went flying off. <laughs> or my bat went flying off. And I bet I know why. It's probably here in this actor. When it gets hurt, then what does he do? So if he's hurt, then he is in knockback. Oh, if he's not in knockback. Then we reduce the health amount. We update the health if it's there. Uh, if it's less than zero, then he passes out. Otherwise, we knock him back. So here in the knockback, I'm changing the Y velocity. So, uh, and based on whether it's on water or not. So this is good for all other uh, other guys, but not so hot for my guy. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm not really using any of this other stuff for my bat. He's never going to hit water. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff that I am... Let's close the snail before I accidentally change him. Uh, I'm not going to use a lot of other stuff. So let's go ahead and just um, extend kinematic body. All right, so we're just taking away uh, his inheritance from actor. And I think that's fine because we're really not using anything except for this hurt method. And we'll implement that ourselves. Uh, actor behavior, instead we're going to use this one. And so let's go back to, sorry, let's go back to my enemy bat pass here. And here for actor behavior, We'll just switch that to physics process. And I think this should work just fine. The only thing we want to do is there's not going to be a knockback method. So we're just going to delete that. And we can also delete this because there is no knockback method. We do need health though. And remember I set this here, but now I'm not inheriting. So I need it back. And because I'm setting it right there, I don't need it there. Uh, right, so pass out is the only function I don't have, uh, and I will need that. So, let's see. Pass out, got that, and we'll go back to enemy boss, and pass out. Let's move this one down here. Order doesn't matter on your functions, just as long as they're in the right um, position horizontally. And so let's, okay, let's try this. <clears throat> yep, messed something up. Identifier not found velocity. Very good. So I'm no longer using velocity at all, so I don't even need them there. Can't have an empty method like that, so it's going to complain. I can just use pass, and that should be fine. Uh, identifier not found is passed out. So, right. So what's happening here is our, our character actually stays alive for a little while uh, as it plays this animation, and then when it's done, it does the cue free. And we have some logic here um, based on this. We can have some logic based on the is passed out. So I probably kind of need that. So I'm going to say var is passed out equals false. All right. I need to remove that block. So if I jump on him, now he probably took damage. Uh, maybe not. Okay. There we go. So there we it took a couple shots. Uh, I'm not sure why the first round I didn't get him. 
Let's try that again and see if it happens again. I might have just gotten really... Oh, there we go. I think what happened is, is I hit a very lucky spot where the physics of my character, if you look at my player, his rays... Um, he's got a, a section here that could catch on the section there, and I think that's what happened. I could fix that by going here, and I vaguely remember spending some time trying to get these just perfect, so I'm a little bit nervous moving these, but I should be able to just move them over like that, and then woo, move that one over like that, so that there's less of that chance of that little hang happening. Let's see. I still got them, but I think that's pretty good. Um, I do kind of want to have some sort of animation on this guy so that I know when I've hit him because it did seem a little bit um, odd. Really need to get rid of that. It seemed a little odd, you know, I'm just bouncing away on his head. And, uh, ooh, doesn't like to ride up on top of him. <laughs> doesn't like to let me jump while I'm riding on top of him. So yeah, let's let's get a um, let's get oh yeah let's remove this before I forget. Um, let's make an animation on him. Let's go ahead and look at how we did it on the player. I think what we did is we have on this animation player we probably have a oop, this is for the HUD stuff. Oh, here we go, flash. So what we do, whoa, don't want to do that, don't want to do that. I want to scrub, there we go. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're just flashing the player based on this animation thing, so let's not save that. Let's go here, and then um, in our player script, if we look at, actually, let's look at the actor. I bet in the pass out, no. In the knockback, so here's the knockback function that we got rid of. That's where we were playing this animation. Uh, we probably could use this whole knockback function back. It, even though we won't be getting knocked back, we do want to have a period where the bat can't be hurt um, while it's flashing. So let's go ahead and add, add that back in. I think that'll be good. And we do want to set the knockback and we want to set the animation player to flash. Don't care about if he's in water or not. We're not going to move him. And change his Y. And we're not going to flip him because we're not changing his direction. And then uh, right here, what this is doing is saying, let's yield and wait until the animation player is finished. So that's the flash animation is finished and then we'll change the is knockback back. So I think that's fine. So what this will do is on the hurt uh, else. So we're adding back in that line. So if our health is greater than zero, so he's still alive, let's knock him back. And all his knockback's gonna do, set a flag so that we know that he's in that state so that we don't hurt him again. So if we say if is in knock back equals true. Then let's just return. And I believe that that was there before as well. And I also need that here. So there is in back equals true uh, false. All right. So this should prevent him from doing that. However, I don't have an animation player. It's not going to complain because we uh, had this code here that says if there's a get node, um, but we need that in order for this to actually work the way we want it to. So let's uh, leave that. We go to the animation player. We're going to say new animation. We're going to call it flash. 
to match that right there. Uh, I think that one second is probably fine for this. And uh, what we did before is we just uh, had a bunch of little nodes based on the alpha of the animated sprite. So I can do that by looking at the visibility modulate. So let's keyframe that. New. So that'll put that little dot right there. Let's move it forward just a little bit. We'll scrub forward and we'll change this to alpha zero. And then we'll keyframe that. We'll scrub forward a little bit more. Alpha one. Keyframe that. Scrub forward a little bit more. And maybe this is too fast. So let's uh, alpha zero. Keyframe. Scrub forward. Alpha one. Keyframe. And so what I can do is just move these around. I probably need another set, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, alpha zero. Keyframe. Scrub forward. Alpha one. Keyframe. Okay. So now if I scoot this one forward, and I'm just spacing them out a little bit. It's not going to be consistent. I could change the step size to 0.075. It uh, won't let me get it that low. Let's just leave it here. And we will... Oh, I know what I can do. I can just reduce the time. So the overall time I want to be right here, which is 0 0.6. So 0.6. So that'll be my overall animation time. Let's give it a shot and see what we're at. One, two, and uh, doesn't work so hot when he's flying up. Uh, oh, he's immortal now. Oh, he he passed out. interesting. So I must have done something to disrupt his ability to die. So Oh. Let's try this one. That may be what's causing my problem. Two and three. So he passed out, that's why it got weird. But I'm not sure why he's keeping going. Uh, passed out, so it said general passed out. Passed out is true. Oh, my animation player's uh, goofing up. So it's, it's saying, hey, there's an animation player here, but he doesn't have this pass out animation. Uh, and so it's like stuck hanging on this. That's where I goofed up. Okay, so we just need a animation on here called uh, new pass out. And I don't really care what it does. Um, matter of fact, I don't even need this. What I can do is delete that one. What I can do is just remove this. And instead, yeah, I can just remove it. What I probably want to do instead is, is play my uh, dead animation so that he falls to the ground. So we'll have something else happen. There we go. Got him. We got the enemy boss and now we'll be able to continue. And so the next video what we'll do is we'll... Um, this one's been going on quite a long life. We'll have a door here that won't open until you defeat the boss and then when you do the door will disappear allowing you to go and grab your prize the jetpack so that'll be that'll be in the next video thanks for watching and enjoy